Hi, this is Tag again, and today I actually want to talk about BIOS modding, but I'm not going to let this deter me from using this here BIOS modding video as an excuse to talk about these uh, Sun Microsystems OEM 939 boards here. Now, I, I use these here because they are basically a Titan Thunder K8 board, but with an OEM BIOS and with less stuff on them. So there is two options. Uh, one of them is to just hard flash the Tyan BIOS on here to get some overclocking options at least in BIOS. And the other is to mod the BIOS itself, so re-enable some options. Now, the advantage of re-enabling the options in BIOS is that you basically just get the uh, Sun board displayed in CPU-Z, which I think is really cool. So. The reason I kept these at all, I have like, I don't know, eight or that or something like that of them, uh, is that they, well, from layout standpoint, they are really good, I would say. Uh, one, they have a N-Force 4 Ultra, so I would say the best chipset unless you want to run SLI for 939. Uh, they have a four-phase VRM with decent FETs, uh, two, two low side, uh, one high side is I think there is uh, the high side all on top and then there's one low side on front and one low side on back for each phase. Four phase VRM, polymer caps for output filtering. Instead of the four pin, you have a eight pin EPS here. And memory layout is also s seems to be a decent at least. Also, polymer on memory, which the DFI does have, so. Polymer is an input filtering as well, actually. It's uh, really fancy. Unfortunately, uh, even with the mods, the BIOS options are kind of limited. And so far, I haven't even managed to get to 300 FSB. Anyways, that's basically my modded board. Of course, added vault mods. Now, I'm, I'm not going to actually show the vault mods on this video, I think, because, well, I don't think uh, enough people have these boards to, to really care, and they're also not relevant enough. I just want to, again, basically use these boards as an excuse to make a video about um, like BIOS modding by re-enabling options in BIOS. So uh, again, I'm going to put the timestamps in the description so you can skip right ahead and, and don't have to listen to me ramble about motherboards. I also added my PS2s here. They are not populated here, but the traces are all there. So these two work. Uh, Monitoring, not even glued down on this one because I don't, don't really care. I also put a better Northbridge heatsink on here when benching, but I don't have it on the board for show now because it's kind of, well, it's just set on there, gravity mounted, so it would fall off if I do this. Anyways, I think that's about it about these boards. Uh, let's move on to the PC. Now, the Tutorial here is going to be only about uh, a ward BIOS, so uh, AMI still hates me. Anyways, let's move on to the computer and let me show you how to do it, and or at least how I do it. See you soon. Okay, so here we are. Now, there is a tool that you're going to quickly find when you Google for something like a ward uh, BIOS editor or something. This is this AWBD edit thing here. Now, personally, I never had any luck with this, but let's open the file and uh, let me show you how it looks. Again, this is not the tool I'm going to use because, well, for me, it just screws up the BIOS images and they don't work anymore. Uh, we have here our Sun NF4 Ultra. That is, should be the right one. No, again, it, it seems to already have failed. Yay! No, it didn't. So in here you can browse your BIOS options. Now this tool works perfectly for seeing what is enabled and what isn't. So after you've done your mod with the other tool I'm going to show you, you can definitely use this tool to check if it worked. Now you want to go here to the setup menu and then you can go through your... That Those are basically the uh, subcategories you see in the BIOS. We are interested in chip feature. Then have a look at uh, CPU frequency here. We have an option. HD frequency is actually enabled HD with. 
uh, spread spectrum is disabled so we're going to enable that so you can well enable the option so it, it gets shown and you can select it so you can disable spread spectrum there's also in here somewhere the memory settings I hope I think it's here not this is kind of torn up in in ways that it shouldn't be I can't find them right now uh, however in the stock bios basically we don't have a uh, memory timings in the right one we do but let's close this this is just a warning that you shouldn't use this tool for editing the bios itself obviously if you have a board that you want to mod the BIOS on, I would always recommend getting hard flasher. This is the software for the uh, Zigo, I think, uh, TL866 Mark II. Uh, great thing, can actually write the EE e e prompts from the old stuff, so that uh, is not well. The other flasher you might come across is the CH341A, and that can only do. Uh, basically EE prompts or flash chips rather with a serial interface so it has a uh, SPI flasher basically I think it can do I2C as well not sure but uh, this one can actually flash old school EE prompts as well so that would be a great option uh, anyways let's move on to the tool that actually works if I can find it in this little folder here uh, I think it is I put it here no that's Phoenix BIOS that also doesn't work uh, Tyne K8E, there we have it. Uh, mod bin, I'm going to put this here uh, in the description below. That is the version that seems to work the best for me. Uh, you can also find it by googling mod bin 6 download, but there is a bit uh, like multiple versions and, and some sketchy websites there. So I'm just going to put the Google Drive link in the description and be done with it. Uh, let's move this to our directory so it automatically. Oh, I already did that. Great, I'm actually prepared for a video no, and I actually don't know it. Anyways, you want to open your mod bin and then you can, this is keyboard only, unfortunately, so you're not going to see any mouse cursor here. Well, you're going to see it, but it doesn't do anything. So let's load our sun bin, our BIOS binary. Now we want to select this here option, edit setup screen which is basically, well, this shows you uh, y your BIOS in, a, in like a tree format, like a file system. Uh, and these are basically the categories on your start screen when that you can select. So we want to select our, I think, chipset features it is. Go over here to, the, no, this is, all this navigation is with the arrow keys. Uh, CPU frequency. We want to select that option. Then this this strange little question mark here is our cursor. Uh, press uh, enter on normal, so it shows. So we can also see what options we have in BIOS here. Uh, this is page down, page down. So this goes to 250. Unfortunately, I haven't yet found any way to get more than 250 on this particular board from BIOS. You can get further with uh, something like clock chain for an NF4, obviously. Uh, so save this, again enter, uh, escape for exit. I think HD frequency we have, yes we have. HD wave we also have. I think what we said was spread spectrum we need, right? Yes. Enter, enter, escape. The spread spectrum as well, I guess. Why not? Did I? Yes, I did. PCIe. Just enable all the options. I, I don't actually know what the difference here is. Okay, now we have another, as you can see here, this is our main menu, advanced chipset. Then we have these in the main menu. And as you usually have with your DRAM configuration, you have that in a sub menu. So there we are in our DRAM sub menu now. Again, arrow keys. You want to enable all your timings. So this should be timing mode, I think is, uh, yes, that's just if the timings are on auto or in, on manual. And we obviously need that on enabled so we can even set manual. 
So set that to normal. Index value megahertz, so that is our basically memory divider. Now, I think this, these non-selectable dividers here are 140 megahertz, 183, and I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, you could, in theory, edit the description here uh, and enable them, but I'm not going to do that because I think the ones that we have here that are selectable already are just fine. So, memclock index I set to normal, yes. Then, our cache latency, we of course want to set that. Default value is 2.5. We could select uh, something like two here if we only ran Winbonds and wanted to boot them straight away, I guess. But for now, I'm just going to leave it to 2.5. I don't think there is any point in selecting it, to setting it to three. Obviously, you can edit your uh, basically the values that your stuff starts up at in here too. So I could let's just say three here. Uh, that should be. Why isn't it not three? Why are you not working? Doesn't like me. Okay, so it, it usually should work. I don't know why it doesn't. Anyways, usual stuff. Let's disable, uh, enable all our other timings. There we are. TRP as well. I have no idea what that is, so I'm going to put it to show only. I think that's about it for the memory timings that we have access to. That looks like it. Now again, there is no voltage option with this thing, even with the tie-in bias, I think. so. No point in, in messing with that. Now you can go escape and then F for file, save, and it saves it to your file. Easy enough. You can, of course, also. Now I, I overwrote written our original file. You probably shouldn't do that if you. Um, well, if you want to keep a backup, but I, I already have the backup of that somewhere else, so uh, the other option is course, just go F and save as, and then you can you can just type your, uh, I don't know, sunmodder.bin in here. Bin. Okay. That is too long. Then just mod.bin, I guess. And then you, as you can see already in the directory in the background, we have a, uh, where is it? Sunmod.bin here. So anyway, I'm going to flash that thing on the BIOS now, uh, on the BIOS chip, and I'm going to show you uh, my stupid microphone again, sorry. Uh, I'm going to sh just show you my board uh, with the modded Sun BIOS. And we're just going to go into BIOS and, and see if the options work. And basically, I'm going to show you that I have a sun sun board with a sun splash screen and the sun uh, well identifier in CPU Z that overclocks. Anyways, be right back. Okay, here we are. So I connected everything. Let's turn on this board and set some stuff in BIOS. Now I connected a fan on the chipset because this chipset cooler is absolutely insufficient without the cooling from the original case and also this board likes to complain if you don't have fan 1 and CPU fan connected so I connected that. Let's go, BIOS is F2 on this, I keep meshing delete by habit, here we are, so let's set this to something higher, something like Let's go straight for 250. Of 
square. Let's set the memory nice and low, so should it start out with 240. I'm not sure if this thing boots 250. Now, unfortunately, this, this board doesn't have any um, CPU multiplier in OS, uh, in BIOS, so nothing you can do about that. So let's see what happens now. I hope it uh, worked and actually applied our settings. So, something like a board that only goes to 250 would be, I think, absolutely good for a like a retro gaming build. Uh, also NF4 Ultra, so you have proper efficiency and good performance. Also, these boards are super reliable. Uh, like server hardware, obviously. So. See, if we have our BIOS settings, yes, we do. So as you can see, we have a nice 240 megahertz, so 2400 megahertz on this Opteron 146 here. Our mainboard tab says Sun Microsystems 2864. BIOS brand Sun Microsystems 223. There is multiple versions of this BIOS, I'm not actually sure this is the newest one. I have to go through my stash of boards because I have some that have, a, I think, a 227 sticker on the, the BIOS chip. So I, I maybe should pull a BIOS from them and, and flash it on here. This is a bit wrong. I'm not sure what the hell it is detecting here. Because I only have one gigabyte installed here. Which is kind of strange that it says two gigabytes. There's also, unless you're running ECC stuff, no two gigabyte sticks on DDR1. Strange. As you can see here, uh, we have a one gig stick in here and nothing in the other slots. Obviously, it detects in the other slots. Strange. It it seems like we have uh, two of our SPT slots sort of meshed together. Hmm, I have to look into that because it seems like it 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 reads the SPT chip on on one stick and displays it on two slots. Kind of odd. Anyways, as you can see, we were successful. Now, I'm sure this. Now it's idling. Stop idling. Open my bench. Yeah. Yes, now it should boost. Nice. It boosts up. Obviously, uh, this chip should also do uh, 250, but with 1.4 should actually also be enough. But I, I just wanted to be sure for the video that it booted first try basically, so I just said 240. Uh, it definitely works at 250 from BIOS, unlike some other boards where like some stuff set from BIOS doesn't work here. Everything up to 250 works perfectly fine from BIOS. So what you set is what you get. Also, HT-Link kind of high here. You can probably set this to something like X3 or X4 just in when well when you need the stability. Obviously, if you run stable at 1200, that's that's perfect and that's actually good. So. Anyway, I think this was quite a bit of rambling for basically just showing you how to use an ancient piece of software. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless and maybe it helps you. It, this, this BIOS mod also works on some other boards. Basically, um, anything that has an award BIOS from this K8 era should be fine with this. But that's it for now and I hope you liked it. Uh, bye.